Restrictions on student immigration have cost the British economy an estimated £8 billion in the last five years. The government is making it harder for international students to find a job after graduating. So less foreign students are choosing UK universities. And that means less money being driven into the exchequer. But Chiroshi Mukherjee is one of those who picked UK universities over that of any other country. Um, firstly, I wanted to come to England because I wanted to have a world-class education. Um, I wanted to do business, but I wanted to do business in a global scale. I sort of wanted to come to a place where it would be like... Um, a mixture of different cultures, different perspectives, um, which would help me sort of understand business and um, culture on, um, on a very uh, world-class level. International students bring an estimated £7 billion to the country each year. Tuition fees for them are unregulated. This means they often pay a lot higher fees than national and EU students. The British government has repeatedly said that it will reduce net migration from hundreds of thousands to tens of thousands. A significant number of immigrants are students who choose to work in the UK after graduation. So the government has been making it much harder for them to do that than before. Another area that has been a huge uh, barrier um, uh, has been the two-year post-study work visa, which I was proud to play a major part in introducing when I introduced it in Parliament in 2007. And at that stage, we did not have the two-year post-graduation work visa. We then, the government listened, the government brought it in. And if you look at the number of international students from a country like India from 2008, the figures escalated. And then, when the coalition government came in, they removed the two-year post-graduation work visa, where students from around the world could automatically stay on and work for two years in the UK to earn some more money to pay for the education, to gain some work experience, to contribute to our economy, to continue to make the generation-long friendships in this country. That was removed. And now a student, if they want to stay on and work in the UK after their studies, they're given a very short window in which to find a job, and they have to find an employer to sponsor them at a minimum threshold of salary. And the practicalities of getting employers to sponsor these students has meant that very few students now are able to actually stay on for that post-graduation work experience. What you found though, the, or the Home Office view, was that lots of people weren't filling skilled jobs following their degrees. They were working in shops and so on. So that's moved now to being able to swap to a skilled position under the Tier 2 rules. In order to qualify under the Tier 2 scheme, the minimum salary for any job is £20,800. But what you'll find is each specific skilled job in the codes of practice will also have a minimum salary. And if you're applying for that job, then the, the salary has to meet that minimum requirement, even if it's above the 20800 uh, bottom limit. Now, students have four months to find a job in the UK after graduation. Chiroshi did not. Uh, I think the post-study work visa would have definitely, definitely helped me because um, that would mean that I would have a two, do two years window to sort of gain experience in the field that I studied in uh, without always worrying about, oh my God, who's, what is going to have next? I have got like a month left. As soon as I finish, you don't even get the time to properly say goodbye to the people you have met here. And you have literally built a life here for five, six years, and then you're just asked to go like straight away. These regulations caused a fall in the number of international students 
for the first time in 29 years. It fell from about 312,000 in 2011 to about 307,000 the next year. By 2015, the number dropped to about 170,000 students. India student numbers in particular have been dropping sharply from about 18,000 in 2010 to 13,000 in 2011 and further to 10,000 in 2012. From countries like India and China, the demand for, to study abroad in those countries is over 6% per year. It's increasing at over 6% per year. We need to keep up with that demand. Which are the countries they want to study in? The United States and the UK foremost, and also Canada and Australia. And at the moment, because of our immigration policies, countries like Canada and Australia are benefiting, and students from countries like India are going to countries like Australia instead of coming here to the UK. So France has said it wants to double the number of international students from India by 2020. So we should go even further by targeting specific countries and setting targets to increase the number of international students. Countries like Australia, of course, have openly said they're very grateful to the UK for their immigration policies because it is sending the brightest and the best from countries like India to Australia when they would come to England. The British government say that the policies still help the best and the brightest settle in the country. Chiroshi disagrees. So I was a student rep, I was a student ambassador. When I did my masters, I did business management. And when I finished, um, I finished with the first class, which was a distinction. And I also got one of the highest marks in my cohort for my dissertation. While I was doing my course, I got nominated as the best student representative, and I won that. And after that, I also um, got nominated for Dean's Award for excellent performance in my master's, and I won that as well. She was also in this year's London Pride March representing Hertfordshire. As the Chancellor of the University of Birmingham and also the uh, Chair of the Advisory Board of the University of Cambridge Judge Business School and the recently appointed President of the UK Council for International Students Affairs, UKISA, uh, we have 500,000 international students in Britain. Uh, of which 170,000 are from the European Union. International students are one of the biggest assets to this country. Uh, they bring in about 14 billion pounds, directly and indirectly, into the economy. They enrich our universities. Uh, our domestic students' experience is greatly enhanced by foreign students being in our universities. The way our students here can learn uh, about different cultures, different parts of the world, make friends from people from countries from all over the world. Lord Billy Moria himself came from India as an international student. I came to study in the UK. I qualified as a chartered accountant, including doing a diploma in accounting in London. I qualified with what is today EY, Ernst & Young, in London, and qualified as a chartered accountant. Then I did a law degree at the University of Cambridge and started my business, Cobra Beer, uh, after I finished my law degree which I've now built over the past 26 years into a household name. Chiroshri is not done with her life in the UK. She applied for a European Economic Area Partnership Visa with her Belgian girlfriend, Joanna. 
The application was rejected, so they applied a second time. The response is expected in November. Of sufficient evidence of your esteem. Well, I've been awake since about six in the morning, just to see what the result of the referendum was. I feel really scared and I feel really confused. I don't know what is going to happen. And even though David Cameron has said that he's going to resign, it is also a matter of who is going to be the next prime minister. And God forbid it's Theresa May, then people like me who know that she's totally against immigration whatsoever, it's going to be really difficult for us to survive and even have a prosperous future. Where our current Prime Minister, when she was Home Secretary, wanted international students to leave the day they graduated. This is a country which had billboards going around saying illegal immigrants go home. This is a country where the current Prime Minister, when she was Home Secretary, wanted to introduce a £3,000 bond for people from certain countries like India to visit this country which was withdrawn. The billboards were withdrawn. The, the, the desire for international students to leave the day they graduated was withdrawn. Given Theresa May's record as Home Secretary and her attitude as Home Secretary towards immigration and student immigration, um, I'm very concerned mm -hmm. uh, that she will maintain that attitude as Prime Minister uh, and insist on it persisting with the current Home Secretary having to sing to that tune. Um, but we will have to wait and see. I mean, the, the rules change all the time. And, um, you know, what I'm saying today is, as of today, they could change next week, they could change the week after. So the, the rules are continually evol evolving. And generally speaking, they're becoming more difficult to meet. Uh, because the stated aim of the government is to reduce immigration down to, um, to 100,000 a year rather than the 300,000 it is at the moment. Obviously I've faced different situations in my life but they have never been this tough. Like, no money, no security, no job. I, I have never been in that position. Um, constant fights with person I love because we don't really know where this is going what we are trying to achieve out of it and being unemployed I don't know how it is for other people but for me it's it's something that I I just cannot get over and I feel like I'm worthless I feel like I actually have failed that life because I don't have a job About 20% of international students stay back in the UK for five years or more, and no more than 10% settle here permanently. 75% of British people surveyed think international students should be allowed to stay and work for at least a period of time.